Hey guys, what's going on? This is Drew Douglas in for day 16 uh, of WordPress for Designers. I am back. Um, I have to apologize for a little bit of the downtime. I'm sorry. Um, if you have been following me on Twitter, I actually uh, ended up getting in a jet ski accident a couple weeks back and uh, messed up the right side of my ribs pretty bad. Um, so I've just kind of been housebound here on a, uh, a lot of different medication and haven't really just, you know, been up to uh, doing much. Um, so, you know, big thanks to Jeff for giving me some time off and, and hopefully you guys will be pretty uh, uh, understanding. So I am sorry it, it took a while, but I'm uh, still uh, recovering just a bit. So anyway, that that's, that's why we've taken a short hiatus and uh, I'm fine. So I appreciate all of the... Uh, nice wishes, all, and I've gotten a r lot of really nice emails and, and Twitter messages and all kinds of stuff. So uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you uh, a lot for your support. And again, um, you know, no worries. I'm just fine, just recovering. So uh, and on top of that, I had a birthday, you know, getting so old, big 22 here. So uh, just been really uh, kind of a crazy past two, three weeks. Anyway, you can see I'm ready to rock. I got my new Hanson wallpaper out, um, you know. You always need that inspiration. That's the number one tip I give to everybody. Uh, when you're working with WordPress, get that Hanson wallpaper in there uh, f before you even install, because you, you know, you'd just be amazed at how much the you know. I don't even know. Okay, so <laughs> let's move on. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, I know you guys really want to get the slider done, um, but to be completely honest with you, I just haven't had the chance to you know since I've been kind of hurt I haven't had the chance to uh, kind of write the queries and in the in the code because the slider part when we pull it out when we pull our images uh, without having to do anything is going to be really kind of complicated and I just really haven't had the time to to look at it yet um, but I wanted to get another episode uh, done for you guys because I know a lot of you are waiting so um, I decided to just knock out a page real quick and so we're going to just uh, go through the entire uh, services page today and just get done with it. And then that will leave me some more time to work on the slider. So I know a lot of you uh, wanted to get to it, but I, I just need a little more time, guys. So I would appreciate it. Um, so yeah, today we're going to work on the uh, services section of a uh, page of our WordPress theme. Um, there's a few questions we need to ask before we... Uh, start coding this and get ready to start coding it and we're going to do that now um, a few uh, one of them is you know how are we going to get the services text separated from our paragraph text because you know as you guys know when you go to the WordPress backend there's not five different text areas you know for, for you to write different content and there's there's one main text area um, you know excluding custom fields there's one kind of main area to type all your content. So how are we going to get this content here and this content here? That's one of our questions. How are we going to attach images automatically to float to the left? Um, and then how are we going to get our testimonial to show up and our services from the back end? Um, you know, what if we wanted to add a new testimonial and, and, and change this one? Um, luckily our services sidebar will be pretty easy because that shows up on almost every page. So uh, most of that can just be hard coded right into our page template. So that is what we are going to cover today, and we are going to jump straight into this. Okay, if you go to the back end of uh, WordPress, hopefully you guys have all updated to WordPress 2.8. Um, if you haven't, I really recommend it. There's some kind of pretty cool new features, and it just seems a lot more quick. Uh, the back end panel, I know, is a lot quicker. So um, if you go to services, you'll see that I've set up a service page and click edit. We uh, will see some dummy content here, just have some two little paragraphs set up. Um, you'll see, obviously, the page title. And then the big thing that we're going to go through today and that's going to really um, put this page together is our custom fields. And if you haven't worked with custom fields before, don't worry, because it's really, really simple. Um, I think we've discussed these in a couple of our other uh, screencasts here, but we'll go ahead and we're going to discuss them again today because this is kind of a vital part of our services page. Um, you'll see the first one is named page underscore img or page image, and it has a value uh, which is a URL linking to uh, one of our images. If I copy and paste this and open it up, you can see it's our little web design image. Um, 
So yeah, that's just the URL to the image we want. Our page underscore text is just some dummy text, and this is going to be uh, our little services text right here. And our testimonial, which for some reason I capitalized, but you know, it's nothing to worry about. Um, normally you want to stick with your same naming conventions, but anyway, we have a, va a name of testimonial and then just, you know, some uh, also value of just some dummy text. And this will be for our little testimonial snippet. If you scroll down, you can see I've, you can actually include HTML in here. Um, you know, sometimes it just gets to a point where it's uh, even, you know, we're using custom fields to help us out, but for little things like this, it's okay to just go ahead and hard code a paragraph and a strong tag. I mean, unless that really drives you crazy, uh, I just think it's worth it to just go ahead and hard code it in there. There's no point in trying to figure out another way to get that little tiny snippet or adding another custom field just for the John Doe part. So, um, so that's what we're doing. And um, in case you didn't know how to create them, all you would do to, to make all of these different fields would be to go to add new custom field and then enter new. You would type in whatever name you had and you would type in the value. And what's cool about custom fields is uh, once you come back, let's say we wanted to make a new page with the same page text custom field, it will save them in your little select drop down box here. So I could just you know choose from any of these and quickly add the value for them and be done with it. So keep in mind these three different custom fields we have set up because these are what we're going to be working with today. Um, that and some CSS. So if we go over to our services page on our WordPress theme, it's pretty ugly, um, and we are going to fix that. So let's go to Coda. Alright, first thing we're going to do is open up page.php. Now, page.php is our template file for our individual pages, meaning contact, services, about. Um, all of those pages are going to be um, formatted and in, uh, in, in, uh, styled and in, in all that stuff with the page.php um, template. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and open up some PHP tags right underneath the if statement for the loop. And we're going to set up three variables. First one is going to be page tagline. Now page tagline, uh, we're going to pull out and store that little uh, you know, snippet of text that we have uh, right up here from our custom field. So we're going to say page tagline equals get post meta. And get post meta is a custom WordPress method, and that is what's going to uh, pull out the value of that. And it's going to take three arguments. The first one is going to be the post ID. So we're just going to say post ID, which tells it the current post uh, that we're on. The second argument is going to be page text, which is the name of our custom field. And lastly, just set it to true. Okay, we're going to set up two more. The next one is going to be page image or page uh, underscore img. We're going to make another call to get post meta, and we're going to do the same thing. Post id. Uh, this is going to be page underscore image, and true. And lastly, is going to be testimonial equals get post meta, not get post meet, get post meta post ID testimonial and true okay so now we've grabbed uh, our three different custom fields and we've stored them in variables so now we can access them uh, anytime we need to in our page template here so that's going to save us a lot of time um, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of come down here and format some more things and we're just going to get rid of in the post uh, div we're going to get rid of the content and the WP link pages uh, for now. So that will leave us uh, the page title. So now what we need to do is we need to separate our, uh, our little tagline area from everything else. So we're going to give this a div class of tagline. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to give it a, a page tagline. It'll be a little more descriptive there. And we'll come down here and close that div and indent. 
Okay, so now we've wrapped it in a little uh, div class, so now we have a little more flexibility when it comes to styling and CSS. And now we're just going to come down here. We already have the, the title, you know, the, the page title between H2 tags, which is fine. And in between some paragraph tags, we're just going to echo out some PHP. We're going to say echo page tagline. And that will be our tagline in between some paragraph tags. It's um, actually pretty simple. After that, we need to look at our Photoshop document. You'll remember that there's this little airplane here. So uh, that's what we will be adding now. Whoops. We're just going to add an image tag. OK, one thing I wanted to discuss, because I got drilled for this earlier in the comments. Um, Instead of hard coding the path with the image tag, like WP content, themes, paper business, whatever, WordPress provides a, uh, a predefined constant. Uh, I'm kind of having a mind blank here. I think it's, someone will have to correct me. I'm pretty sure it's template path. It just looks something like this. You know, and that would obviously be in between PHP tags. And that would automatically find the path to your template so you wouldn't have to hard code things. You could just put the image name um, or whatever. But um, the reason I'm hard coding them is I, I tried doing that when I was preparing this, and if someone you know someone has an answer, you can help me out. But uh, when I tried it on my local server running uh, MAMP, it, uh, the the uh, URL w using template path wasn't correct. Uh, it would just come up with a broken image. It would go too far into my uh, Apache uh, or you know MAMP installation. Um, and it, it would it would look too deep into the URL or, or something like that. Anyway. Um, I couldn't get it to pull it out. So I'm just, for now, I'm going to hard code it, and we are going to discuss how you can use that template path constant later. So um, if someone has an answer for why I can't get the template path to pull out the right path on, on MAMP, then, then feel free to let me know. So let's do themes, paper business, style, images, plain, underscore, dark. Now you're probably asking why is that plane called plain dark when the last one was called plain. Well, I didn't really realize this either. Um, but if you look here at this airplane, you'll notice the little trailing dots here. They're actually, you know, it's dark. It's gray. It, it, it's a lighter or it's a darker gray. Um, on our other one, on the home page, let's see here. Of course, you've got to give Photoshop a second. On the home page, the airplane is lower, and you'll see that it's actually white dot. Um, you know, I, I didn't catch that, so when I went to make this one, I obviously needed a new plane. So now we actually have two planes, and it's, you know, no big deal, just wanted to explain that. Okay, so there's, there's our little, um, you know, page tagline section, and believe it or not, that's all we need markup-wise um, to get that little... Uh, area showing here. So we're just going to kind of move along here, make some more uh, space for what we got going. And we're going to do our sidebar, which is going to require a little more markup. We'll give it a div ID of page underscore sidebar. And we'll close that div. All right, next we're going to need um, to remember that we've pulled out the top, the middle, and the bottom of these little uh, sidebar box things. And that's so we can get the little fold, we can get the middle that will repeat for as long as we need to with the content, and then we can see at the bottom here we have a little bit of, you know, kind of crinkly paper effect. And we want to make sure that we keep that in there, because um, those, those little details are real nice. So what I'm going to do is add a little div class of sidebar top. I'm going to fill it with just a space, and that's that. And then I'm going to say uh, another div class here. Now we need to mark up the middle. So sidebar middle, and inside of that we're going to have an unordered list. And we're just going to add, you know, some basic. Uh, basic links like we have in our PSD. Like I said, we can go ahead and hard code this be considering that uh, this will be showing up for almost every single one of our pages. Um, 
it's just as easy as going from the back end if you ask me when it's going to stay pretty static. So I'm just going to add a few links here. And we'll just name them, you know, something generic, as or just follow the PSD, I guess. Web design, and I'll just copy and paste this to speed this process up. I'm sure you guys get pretty bored watching me mark up unordered lists by now. Uh, we'll do SEO for this one. And another link. How about one more for good luck? Okay. So there's the basic uh, markup for the middle of our first sidebar. Then underneath the middle of that, we want to have our bottom. This is going to be div class, sidebar, bottom. Again, fill it with a space. You don't want to leave any divs completely empty or else they might show up and uh, might not show up in some browsers. I've learned that the hard way over the years. Okay, so there is our first, uh, the markup for our first um, little services snippet here. Um, oh, except for the sidebar top actually doesn't need to be blank. Duh. Put an H2 tag there with services. We need the title of the services bar. Okay, now that's the basic markup for uh, the first one. The second one is going to be very, very similar. We're just going to come over here and try to keep this as organized as I can so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for our second one, except it's going to get a little different at the end. Div class of sidebar top. Some header tags with testimonials. Okay, now we want to do the middle of our sidebar here. Sidebar middle. And we're going to add another class here. Remember, in with classes, you can just separate them with the space and add as many as you want. And we're going to add one that says um, testimonial. And that way we'll be able to target this later if we need to with CSS. Okay, now instead of adding this markup, uh, hard coding it like we did for our uh, other sidebar, we're going to pull out our testimonials man or from the back end. So that way, if this was a, you know, a theme for a client, they would just have to log into the page and they could change the testimonial from the back end. They wouldn't have, worry they wouldn't have to worry about opening up any of the code or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to open up some PHP tags and we are going to echo out testimonial just like that we're gonna finish it off with a sidebar bottom class and this one will have a space in it like so okay so that is the markup for our sidebars um, you know not too hard we're just kind of making sure we put all of the uh, you know, necessary markup in place so we can go back with CSS and add all of it. Um, add things like the top and the middle and the bottom and uh, stuff like that. So let's move on to the content. Okay. We'll come down here outside of the sidebar. Div ID page content sounds pretty descriptive to me. I gotta stop writing dove instead of div when I close my divs. Alright, now the first thing we're going to do is we have that little image that floats to the left um, of our content. So what we'll do is we'll add an image class of a line left, page image. So we're giving it two classes here. A line left is a, uh, is a class that comes with most WordPress themes, or at least your um, all WordPress themes come with, um, well I shouldn't say all, most WordPress themes recommend coming with a set of predefined classes that the end user can use. Um, we've talked about these before when we first went over our um, 
when we first started talking about this series. But basically, if we go to the layout.css file, you'll see that these rather presentational classes are generated by WordPress, so it's useful to have some styles for them. So these are classes that WordPress automatically generates, and it's really nice to just put some very, very gen generic um, styles in them. So you see a line center is you know, display block, margin zero auto, a line left floats the element left, a line right floats it right, uh, WP Caption gives it you know, a nice little border and aligns it in the center with some padding and margins. Uh, dirty little trick is a way to clear your floats, um, one of many ways to clear a float. And Theme Switcher is uh, built for a Theme Switcher plugin, which we don't have to worry about. So that's what's uh, that's what's up with that CSS. Anyway, we're giving it two classes: a line left and page image, as we want to be able to have some CSS control over it. Uh, SRC is going to equal, and this is where we're going to do our little PHP. We say PHP echo, and we'll just say page image. Now obviously we're assuming that they will always be adding an image and that's fine for this demonstration purpose purposes. And give it an alt of whatever you want. Um, if you wanted to get more advanced with this, you could add a cool little, you know, custom field for the alt text and put put some alternate text right in there. For now we're not going to worry about that since, you know, we're just teaching you how to do this. After the image, we're going to say PHP the content which I'm sure most of you know by now. Uh, this is how we display our content, and then we can just add something like, you know, uh, what do they always put? They put P class of serif. This is just a WordPress class again. And we'll just say, you know, read the rest of this page. All right. Okay, and there's our content all set up and nice. We'll go ahead and add in our link uh, pages again. That's nice to have there. We don't want to leave those out of our themes. Um, this will kind of link our different pages together so they can go to the next one. We'll say WP link pages. Inside of that, we'll have an array. Okay, we'll have a before, and that will say you know, something like this. I'm just taking this straight from the uh, from how WordPress does it for default because that's you know still a nice easy way to do it, and we'll say after. close off our p tag lastly we're going to say next underscore or number oops and that will point to number all right that looks right uh, since we're doing some floating we're going to add a our class of or a break of a uh, dirty little trick. We just went over that, so you should remember that's a way to clear your floats. Uh, some people don't like adding markup uh, just to clear their floats. Personally, I don't think one little line break really makes any difference in the world, so I prefer to do it that way. Um, and lastly, we'll give it that little edit link just for when someone's logged in. Edit post uh, link. edit this entry and we'll open it and close it with paragraph tags pretty basic stuff okay looks good looks good okay guys I think that we have made all of the markup that we need to add into our page.php um, file here so, are you ready to see the horror of what this looks like without any CSS whatsoever styling it? We'll go ahead and, yeah, you know, it could be worse, I guess. You can see that we have, um, you know, our services taglines getting pulled, our airplane underneath it, uh, the start of our sidebar here, 
and our uh, our content with the image floated to the left and some of our content um, yeah so what we're gonna do is uh, get rid of this call of get sidebars we're actually gonna have you know we have our own sidebar in our page already here um, we're gonna use that sidebar for something different and you'll see what I mean in a couple episodes uh, on from now so we'll refresh that again okay it looks pretty good I must have two of those in there somewhere yep I do just get rid of that one okay there we go so let's move on to the CSS now guys um, I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time on this I think a lot of you understand um, you know the basics of CSS so you know I'll take it slow but I'm not gonna explain every tiny little thing um, just the important ones so what we'll do is scroll down here under front columns and we're gonna start a new section as always called page or single page so we can keep track of our single page styles like so okay well first thing we're going to handle is that page tagline class if we go into uh, our page.php you remember our page tagline class is the one wrapping up uh, that little tagline at the intro so we'll say page tagline background is going to be transparent the URL will be style images featured page BG dot JPEG uh, we do not want it to repeat and we want it to scroll We're going to give it some margins here to uh, align it properly a width of 839 pixels a height of 220 pixels again just really standard CSS we're setting up here uh, color of 626262 font size is going to be about 15 pixels the line height is going to be about 21 and again if you're wondering how I figure all this out it's it's really just playing around with WordPress guys and and, and just the CSS until you get it right so um, I really recommend just uh, taking a PSD or something sometime and then just coding it yourself and seeing how close you can get it because that's the fastest way to get your skill up so and lastly we give it that position of relative because we're gonna need to position a few things that are in that class moving on page tagline header our h2 header that we have inside of our page tagline needs a color of uh, hex code number 224E70 needs a font size of about 27 pixels and some padding on the uh, top some on the bottom here and some on the left okay I mean that should don't think really that needs any explaining um, we're gonna do the paragraph tags which in the within the page tagline class which would just be uh, you know would just be the, the content right here and we're just gonna give that some padding and set its width give it some padding on the left here oops and the width of that is not as much so we're gonna give it 700 pixels width and we're going to go ahead and align that plain image we have going right now page tagline image so any image within the page tagline class is going to get a position of absolute I really love Coda's auto fill feature here because it saves me some typing um, and top is going to be negative 70 pixels and the right is negative 55 pixels alright quick refresher class for um, those still kinda new to CSS and whatnot we have a page tagline class with a position of relative, right? So if we go over here, you can see that we have a, a page tagline class that it encloses all these other elements. And the, the, the position of this tagline, this page tagline class, is relative. Now we also have a page tagline image that's absolute. If we look in here, 
we have an image in, or a, you know an image tag in here that is absolutely positioned relative to the page tagline. So pretty much we can um, put this wherever we want uh, uh, the image wherever we want on the class of page tagline without having to worry about you know any browser inconsistencies or anything. It will show up on that exact pixel mark every time because we're using uh, you know relative and absolute positioning to their advantage. We're we're positioning it absolutely relative to the page tagline. Uh, I'm sure that sounded a lot more confusing than it needed to be, but but yeah, that's what we're doing. Now let's go ahead and save that and just see what that gives us. I'm kind of curious to see what that looks like anyway. Okay, so we'll come over here, we'll refresh, and there you go. You can see our services looks re you know relatively nice. I think it looks great. Um, let's look at the PSD. I mean, I think that's pretty close. What do you guys think? I mean, maybe the pay the plane could be moved down a little bit, but I'll leave that to the designers and you. Um, let's see a quick typo here. Uh. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, let's move on. Um, let's move on to the sidebar here. Yeah, we ready? No, we got a few more things to do till we move on to the sidebar. Actually, um, let's do the content. Okay, so you'll remember that we have a ID with the page uh, page content. I cannot spell today. Well, although I guess I can never spell. You guys know that. Uh, width is 485. Font size is going to be a 12 pixels. And line height is going to be 23, so just about twice that. Twice that of the font size, I mean. There's our content. Uh, page content. Handle our links here. Man. <laughs> One of these days I will learn how to spell content. Color is 6.5. BDFF. And that's that. Um, page the paragraphs we need to style these would be any of the paragraphs in our actual content section and these are just going to give some basic margins on the top and bottom 20 pixels sounds good enough to me page image class remember that we have a page image class in here uh, right here inside of our page content and that's the one that's floating left and we want to give that um, some margins too so it's not hugging the content because that just is really ugly when it does that okay I think that's good so we'll go ahead and save that and we are going to move on to our let me say page sidebar styles because remember we still haven't actually touched our uh, actual sidebar page for good reason here and um, we're going to discuss that next time but you guys will see um, so we'll do page sidebar. We're going to float that to the right of our content. Set its width since we're floating it. And give it some, uh, you know, basic colors. Uh, again, 6262, Moving right along, we want to, uh, get the sidebar top here and discuss this real quickly actually uh, the sidebar top is going to be this this little snippet right here um, you know right here at the top okay Photoshop <laughs> right you guys get it the, the little page fold is the sidebar top so we need to get that uh, set with a background image so we'll say background transparent URLs equal to style images sidebar top JPEG do not repeat and uh, we're going to scroll and align it at the center and top width is 250 pixels and the height is 76 all right the sidebar middle will be pretty easy to knock out here. It's just a uh, background image. And we'll set the URL 
to style images sidebar middle uh, we actually want that to repeat on the Y axis um, scroll and align it to the center lastly we have that sidebar bottom with the little uh, kind of wrinkles at the bottom of that background is transparent URL is let's see style images sidebar bottom JPEG no repeat scroll center bottom so you can see we're aligning all these uh, correctly together all right let's go to let's tackle our uh, our header and our sidebar you know our little um, so you guys know what I'm talking about a little services section here and a little testimonial part here so we'll say um, sidebar top h2 is going to be uh, a different color 224 e70 I'll write all these different colors down uh, the different hex codes down for you guys so you don't have to try to remember all of them and we'll add some padding of uh, you know 20 pixels on the top 0 on the right 0 on the bottom and 20 on the left that should be good um, now the um, most difficult part not even really difficult but most most CSS uh, full part that we need to finish here is just our uh, own ordered list that we have and so we're gonna do some kind of kind of cool things here so we'll do sidebar underscore middle unordered list and we'll go ahead and say uh, margin just align it a little bit to the top here font size 15 pixels okay then we'll say uh, sidebar <coughs> middle unordered list list item and that is going to have a uh, background image and this is going to be kind of a neat little effect we'll pull off here URL is going to be uh, style images light arrow dot jpeg no repeat scroll 12 pixels 0 pixels and that's just kind of aligning it some sidebar middle unordered list list item with anchor tags inside of them and now we're going to change the color to our our famous 62 62 62 um, display of block gonna give it some padding on the left 30 pixels margin on the left of 10 pixels and a width of 200 okay so why are we setting the anchor tags to display block um, we can do that with just the list item and it would already be displayed block it's because uh, you know good old IE doesn't properly support the use of uh, the pseudo element hover except on anchor tags um, thanks a lot IE so we are going to kind of work around that a little bit so next we're going to say sidebar middle under list list item anchor uh, hover the hover pseudo class then we're gonna say the font weight bold and uh, the background is going to be different oops and it'll be uh, let's see style images dark arrow sounds like a video game doesn't it maybe it is a video game I don't know no repeat
scroll zero pixels zero pixels okay almost done guys lastly we have to take care of our testimonial CSS that was a class of testimonial um, font size is 13 pixels and this is where I'm sure you designers will rock it took me a while to kind of realize that well maybe a few, like a minute or two but th that is a uh, <coughs> serif font compared to the rest of the sans serif we kind of have going on so I think that's Georgia so we'll just do um, you know font family Georgia and then we'll fall back on serif and uh, that should be just fine font style is italic and some basic padding on the left and right okay and we're going to also style the uh, paragraph tags inside of the testimonial with a little bit of padding on the top all right let's save that um, trying to make sure I didn't miss anything or anything I wanted to explain now nope, let's just check it out let's see what we got all right excellent 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 we have just knocked out our page um, our services page um, let's compare it with our Photoshop document you know I think it looks you know, I'm a little biased, but I think it looks nearly exactly similar. Um, so yeah, I think I think it looks good. So today, you know, we kind of covered how to knock out a, uh, a single page doing just some basic markup in CSS. Um, we covered custom fields and how to use them, how to pull them out, and uh, and display them, including images or, or certain text um, or things. So keep in mind when you're a really big help is when you're doing a WordPress theme and you're trying to figure out how do I, uh, you know, I have three different content sections here, you know, and I only have one little text area and I want this all to come from one place in the back end. How do I get this separated from this and this separated from this? How do I do all that? Well, you use, you use custom fields if you have to. Um, you know, they're not always the right answer, but for short, you know, paragraph snippets like that and for images and, and image URLs and testimonials, that's exactly the kind of thing that custom fields um, were built for. So you can see on Hover we have a nice little effect here with our arrows. Um, yeah, so um, again, we didn't cover the slider, but I will try, try, try to get to that for day 17. Um, you know, I just I just needed some time to recover. So um, I'll try to get to the slider on our next series. Questions, comments, suggestions, hate mail, whatever, guys. Um, make sure to send it to me if you have any um, any questions at all. Really. Um, last little thing here. I'd really uh, appreciate it, and I, I know I ask you of all ask this of all of you, but if you're enjoying this and and you want to keep uh, and help support us and help keep these coming um, please please just subscribe to the uh, theme forest RSS feed it takes two seconds and it really really does help uh, me and Jeff and and all of the all the employees here out so um, if you guys would subscribe for me I'd really appreciate it let me know what you want in these next coming series and I will do my best to get them to you um, once again thank you guys very much for all the very nice emails and birthday wishes and all the get well cards and, and stuff like that that was really awesome so hope you guys have a wonderful day happy coding to you and I'll see you guys soon